Hey guys, Eve here, and welcome back to another Celestial Makeup Look video. As some of you know, this is a makeup series on my channel in which I do looks inspired by the full moon, and I'll soon be branching into other planets and stars and such. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't seen my face before, please subscribe. So this month's full moon is nicknamed the Sturgeon Moon, and it's called that because this is the time when the Great Lakes are full of sturgeon, and a sturgeon is a kind of fish. And so I pulled a lot of inspiration from the Great Lakes themselves and from the color of the moon. Because of the summer haze, this upcoming full moon is supposed to have a reddish hue going around it, so we'll see if that's actually true. But continuing on for this look, I use my Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. I also use this palette in my Full Face Drugstore and Cruelty Free video, and if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and click that eye right up, right up here. And if you want to see how I got this makeup look, go ahead and keep on watching. So I already did my eyebrows and primed my eyes and we're heading straight into the Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette and I'm picking the shade number one which is a burnt orange type transition shade and I'm putting that into my crease and on my outer corners blending it up towards my brow bone and out extended towards the temples sort of creating a cat eye shape right off the bat. You want to use a fluffy brush and a light hand with circular motions because you really want this color to be aerated throughout that crease area. Next, I'm grabbing shade number 10, which is another matte crease shade according to this palette. It's more of a deeper burgundy shade, and I'm putting that in the same areas, but a little bit lower, using circular motions once again on a fluffier brush to blend it out. Really blending that up into that first crease shade, shade number one, and extending it past the brow into that more cat eye shape, elongating that eye. And for some reason, I was having trouble blending it, but just on my left eye. That is pretty normal for me though. I don't know why that eye doesn't like to blend, but it's really annoying. I will say that for drugstore eyeshadows, these eyeshadows are highly pigmented and fairly blendable. So, you know, definitely a good deal if you're looking for an eyeshadow to buy. Then using that fluffy brush once again, I'm doing a bit of reverse blending in which I take the first shade I use, which is shade number one, putting that over the edges, which is going to give it a little bit more of a diffused look give it a little bit more of a gradient and I'm holding the brush at the very end of the brush which is going to give you the lightest hand you could possibly have. This is also going to help erase those harder to blend spots like I had on my left eye but doing this reverse blending really helped to give it a smooth gradient throughout the entire crease area. Now I'm grabbing shade number five on a smaller blending brush a little bit more of a pencil brush here and I'm putting that onto the outer corner and a little bit through the crease. This is going to deepen up that area, add a bit more dimension. And in the pan, it's technically a shimmer. However, I find when you really blend out the shade, it looks more of a satin than a shimmery shade. This shade is a little bit harder to work with. The rest of the shimmers are really buttery and smooth and for some reason the shade is more stiff. I don't know if it's a pressing issue, if it's like that with every other palette. If your shade number 5 is like that in your palette, please let me know. I'd be really interested to find out. And then doing some more reverse blending, first with shade number 10, going over those edges from shade number 5, bringing some warmth back into the eye look, and then going over the edges once again with shade number 1. Now I'm taking a little bit more of shade number 5 with a flat brush and putting it onto the inner portion of my lid, and this is going to give us a dark base for the star of the show, which is shade number 8. And I'm taking that with some NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray to make it a little bit more foiled, a little bit more metallic, slowly applying that onto my lid and creating a cut crease as I go along. This shade is a duo chromatic shade, which I'm obsessed with. It's kind of like Max Blue Brown Pigment, but this version is super affordable and cruelty free. And I'm applying the shade to the inner two thirds of my eye. I picked the shade for this look because to me it really represents the depth of the waters of Lake Michigan. And it also looks a little bit like a sturgeon skin, which is a little bit silvery, a little bit shiny. And then reapplying shade number five to to deepen up those outer corners once again, blending the two colors together. 
and then grabbing some more shade number 10 to warm it back up. Then I'm going to create a wing using Pretty Vulgar's Ink Gel Eyeliner using a thin angled brush. First creating the outline of the wing and then filling it all in. And then when we are ready, we are applying my foundation and contour, my base, and moving into blush. And today I'm using my Hourglass Blush in the shade Incandescent Electra. This is one of my favorites. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you would probably know that. I swear I own more than one blush, but this is the one that to me just goes with everything. So <laughs> it reappears a lot. Heading right into the lower lash line. And first I'm applying shade number 10 up close to that lash line and then blending it out with shade number one. First using a pencil brush and then using a fluffier brush. Then deepening up my waterline with an Alder Brand black eyeliner and applying my highlighting base. So this is the Physicians Formula Highlighter in the shade Champagne and I'm using a wet beauty sponge and dabbing that onto the tops of my cheekbones. And then grabbing my Urban Decay Naked Skin Shape Shifting Palette Picking up that gold highlighter powder and putting that onto my nose, my cupid's bow, and my brow bone. Then grabbing my Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild Glow Kit, picking up the shade Blue Ice and popping that into my inner corners, dragging it upwards towards the top of my brow, applying that on top of that gold highlighting base on the tops of my cheekbones. Brushing away any powder left over from the baking process and setting my face with some setting spray. First using my Pixi Glow Mist and then applying my Kat Von D Lock It Setting Spray. Taking that sponge and tapping out my highlighter just to make sure that it really melts into my skin. And then it's time for lipstick. And for lips today, I'm grabbing my Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit in the shade Harbor A Crush, which is from their Mermaid Collection. It's a metallic matte lipstick. It's in a really pretty fall shade. Nice burgundy tone. And then I'm picking up shade number 8 once again from the Comfort Zone palette and packing that right on top. And it gives it a really cool duochromatic extra metallic finish. Curling my lashes to prepare for mascara and for mascara today I'm using my Wet n Wild Lash Renegade Mascara on my upper and lower lashes. Setting my brows using the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. And then for false lashes today I'm grabbing my Ardell Faux Mink Demi Wispy Lashes. Alright guys, so this is the completed makeup look. I think it's very dark and mysterious. If you guys like this makeup look and you like this series, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. And if you like me, click that subscribe button down below. I would really, really appreciate it. Special thanks to Chelsea, Irene. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh. If you want to be featured in a video, go ahead and leave a comment down below and you might just see your name. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.